Hello, everybody, and welcome to exercise five on page 102 of the workbook here. Now let's take a minute and read this exercise together. So they're giving us a, a f, a field of order two to the n, and they'd like us to prove that the characteristic of f is equal to two. Okay, so to get started on this proof, it turns out that it's helpful to look at an additive subgroup of f. Okay, and here's the additive subgroup of f that I'd like to talk about. Okay, the set of all things that look like n times 1, so n copies of the unity element. Okay, and what we're really talking about here is an additive cyclic group. Okay, I'm just going to write that down in words. Okay, in particular, it's the additive cyclic subgroup generated by 1 because if we write this out, what we're going to get is the additive identity, and then 1, and then 2 copies of 1, i.e. 1 plus 1, 3 copies of 1, and so on. And here's my question to you. Is it possible that this process goes on forever and we get infinitely many things in the set H? Could, could that happen? Well, if you think about it, H is a subgroup of a field that they tell us is finite. It has order 2 to the n. So this can't be an infinite list of things in H. Otherwise, we'd have an infinite subgroup of a finite um, group. Okay, so this has to stop at some point. I'm going to call the n number k times 1. And so what that means is that if you took k plus 1 copies of 1, it would take you back to 0. Okay, I'm going to write that down just as a note, side note, when you're looking back over this. So k plus 1 copies of 1 would get us back to the additive identity 0. Okay, so there are a number of statements that we can make, okay, as a result of this calculation that we did with h. Here's the first one. Okay, so by theorem 13.3, I claim that the characteristic of f has to equal k plus 1 as a result of this calculation. Why is that? Okay, well, remember, theorem 13.3 said that if we have a unity in our ring, its additive order has to equal the characteristic. Um, what we just, the observation that we made about h told us that the additive order of 1 is k plus 1. Okay, and so therefore that has to be our characteristic. Okay, we can make one other statement as a result of this. Okay, if we appeal to Lagrange's theorem, okay, that theorem about subgroups, we know that the order of this additive subgroup H has to divide the, the order of our whole group. Okay, in other words, the order of H, which is actually K plus 1. Okay, if you were to go down this list and count these elements, you would notice that there are exactly K plus 1 things on that list that subgroup order has to divide the order of our group, which is the field, having order 2 to the n. Okay, so k plus 1 has to divide 2 to the n. Okay, well, what does that say then? Well, what, are, what do factors of 2 to the n look like? 2 is prime, so the only types of divisors that 2 to the n has are other powers of 2, powers that are powers of 2 that are no bigger than 2 to the n. Okay, so what we could say then is that k plus 1 has to be 2 to the m, okay, for some m less than or equal to n. Okay, I'm going to emphasize where that k plus 1 came from. That was the characteristic of f. Let's add that to that statement. Okay, and this is a very important observation that we're going to use a couple of times, so I'm going to label it star. Okay, so let's think about where we're going with the proof again. What is it that we're trying to show? Okay, we want to show that the characteristic of f is 2. Notice what we've shown so far is that the character, characteristic of f is 2 to the m. So really, what we need to show is that m is 1. That would finish our proof. And let's make that observation and continue. Okay, so now we're going to bring theorem 13.4 into the game here. Um, what did theorem 13.4 say? Well, it said that the characteristic of an integral domain is either 0 or 
it's a prime. Okay, and we've got a field in our problem, and remember that every field is an integral domain, so theorem 13.4 applies to f. So we can say with confidence that the characteristic of f is either 0 or its prime. Okay, now I claim that the characteristic of, characteristic of f can't be 0. Okay, and I'm going to make a statement and deliberately leave a little bit of a gap in the proof. So this next statement that I'm going to make, I'm going to ask you to think about why this is, why this is true. Okay, so here, here, here comes the claim. If the characteristic of f were equal to 0, I claim that the, the, the set h, this, this subgroup up here, would have to be infinite. Or actually, I should be a little bit more careful how I say it, would, would have infinite order, let's say. Well, actually, I guess it depends on what I mean. It, it is infinite as a set, so let's say it that way. H would be an infinite set. Okay, and if you think about it, that can't happen because H is a subgroup of F, and f is a finite set. Okay, they told us that was our assumption that f has order 2 to the n. Okay, so this would contradict that f is finite. Okay, and the step that I'd like you to think about when you go back and reread this theorem is h would be an infinite set. Okay, I, I just kind of stated that, that that's a result of saying that the characteristic of f is zero. I'd like you to think about that and convince yourself that that's really true, what we wrote there. Okay, but if we accept that as true for now, we have ruled out the possibility that the characteristic of f is zero, so the only other possibility is that the characteristic of f is prime. Okay, so what we now know is that this 2 to the m Okay, which just happens to be k plus 1 and the characteristic of f. We're really just restating what we said here in star. That has to be a prime. Okay, so take a look at the beginning and the ending of that statement. 2 to the m has to be prime. What's the only, what's the only value of m that would make that a true statement? m has got to be 1 in order for 2 to the m to be a prime number. Okay, so the only way... for this to be true is if m equals 1, and that tells us that the characteristic of f is 2. All right, and we are done.